Hey, what's up YouTube? My name's Ben and I'm one of the welding instructors here at Elite Welding Academy at the Cincinnati campus and today I'm going to show you how to properly assemble a TIG rig. Okay, so I have an assortment of TIG parts laid out here. We're not going to use all of these parts assembling our rig today, but I did want to kind of give an example to kind of show all the different options when it comes to TIG part choices. All right, so starting off with the gas lenses, as you can see, I have an assortment of gas lenses here. I have more of like an old style gas lens. This is a little bit of an older style, not really used too much anymore, but I just wanted to show the difference. Here at Elite Welding Academy, we use more of a traditional lens that has uh, the actual diffuser screen on there. And these are a little bit better for gas coverage and whatnot. So that's why we stick to these here at Elite Welding Academy. And obviously you have your different size cups for different preferences. We have our collet, we have our choices for our back cap, and we have two different options here for our TIG torch. So one thing I wanna point out with the TIG rig specifically is here at Elite Welding Academy, we use the standard WP17 with the valve TIG rig. Now, with that said, there's definitely different versions of TIG rig. Here is a WP17, but this is an FV, okay? So it has the valve for the argon, but it also is a flex head. It is a bendable neck to make ease of getting into tight spots for doing specific welds. That's not what we give our students here, but I just wanted to show you so you have a reference. Now, before I go any farther, one thing I do want to point out is that with CK Worldwide branded rigs, they don't use the insulator. So as I'm doing the assembling of the TIG rig, you'll notice that I talk about the insulator during the assembly process. If you have a CK Worldwide branded TIG rig, uh, odds are they don't use one of these. Now another thing that I want to note, these are 150 amp rated TIG rigs, which means they can handle 150 amps without any damage, but also know that there's a wide range of all different amp rated TIG rigs available. Okay, so now for the actual torch assembly. First thing, we're gonna take the torch body, okay? The first step is we're gonna locate the insulator. The insulator is this white little plastic thing it has a beveled end and it has a squared end. We're gonna take the beveled end and we're gonna place it into the head of the torch face down, okay? The next step is we're gonna take a gas lens. Now remember, you have options, but here at Elite Welding Academy, we give our students the small gas lens because this is considered the industry standard. We're going to screw that into the head of the torch through the insulator. Now with this step, I want you to remember only hand tighten. Don't use any tools tightening this stuff. You do want it snug, but you don't want to strip out the brass fitting in the head of the torch, okay? Now, one thing I want to point out before we go any farther is now that I have the gas lens nice and tight, you'll notice that the insulator still has a little bit of a wiggle and a wobble to it. That's okay. On the next step, we're gonna put the cup on and that's gonna tighten that insulator down, wedging it up against the torch body and now that wiggle is obviously gone, okay? Next step, we're gonna flip it around to the back. We're gonna locate our collet, and the collet is used to actually clamp down on the tungsten. This is what's gonna lock the tungsten in your rig. We're gonna slide that in there, and then we're gonna choose a back cap. We have a long back cap, and we have a short back cap. We offer both of these options to our students, but me personally, I like the short back cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw that on. Okay. Now again, we just want this hand tight. We don't wanna use any tools, but one thing I wanna point out, if you assemble it properly, there will be a little gap between the actual back cap and the torch body. If the back cap bottoms out on the torch body, you didn't assemble this part up here right with the gas lens in the cup, and you should take it all apart and start over. All right, so now that we have the torch body fully assembled, now we have to get our handle on it and we gotta connect it to an actual power cable. Okay, so here we have our power cable, we have our torch handle, and we have our torch assembly, okay? The first step is we're gonna take the power cable and we're gonna take the torch handle, we're gonna slide it over the power cable, and then we're gonna actually make a connection right here at the torch body. We're gonna thread this on hand tight. Now these fittings, you gotta be very careful. They are brass and you can very easily strip them. So I'm gonna use very small crescent wrenches to make these adjustments. Good and tight. And then I'm gonna take my handle, I'm gonna slide it back over the fitting and then screw it onto the torch body. 
okay? So now we have the torch connected to the power cable. The next step, obviously, is we have to get our power block on there, we have to get our argon hose, and then connect to a regulator. So let's do that next. Okay, so here we have the opposite end of the power cable. We have our insulator boot, we have our power adapter, and we have our argon hose. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the boot and we're gonna slide it over the power cable because this is actually very, very important because once you connect a stinger to your power adapter, uh, this is all live. Any, any metal fitting on the outside of your hoses is considered live. So we're gonna cover it up with this little plastic boot. So we slide this over our power cable, make the connection at the power block. And again, I'm just gonna use my hand to tighten this up until I can't tighten it any further with my hand. And then I will just snug it up with a 7 16th wrench. And then from here, you just slide the boot over this fitting. All right, so last and final step, I have the opposite end of the argon hose and I have a regulator. Now this is just a standard regulator that we use here at Elite Welding Academy. Now the port that this is actually gonna screw into is actually in the bottom and it's very, very simple. Okay, we're just, again, we're just gonna hand tighten. And then using an open-ended wrench, just get it good and snug. And there you go, you are ready to weld. All right there guys, so that's our video on how to properly assemble your TIG rig. If you have any questions about this video, please leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe for more videos in the future. And if you're a student at Elite Welding Academy and you have any questions after watching this video, please come get one of the welding teachers. We'll see you later guys.